Hello, welcome to today's Tactica video. We're going to be talking about the infiltration cadre on the Tau Codex. This is one of the formations that uh, gives some pretty interesting benefits <clears throat> and in itself isn't very overpowered in my opinion, but gives you some interesting tactical uh, possibilities. So, um, what you see in front of you is the base uh, formation size, uh, three Pathfinder squadron, the squads of four Shazlas each. Uh, two stealth suits, um, w which come as a minimum of three suits, uh, no upgrades, and then a piranha. Now the piranha, though I've got a fusion blaster on here, uh, it doesn't have to come with a fusion blaster, it comes standard with a burst cannon. Now that's a 352 point formation, <clears throat> bare bones, so it's sort of, a, you know, pricey, but still it's not that bad. The advantage though is um, you get uh, a lot of marker light shots in here. Granted, they're only hitting on fours, and if they do move, uh, if, the sh if the pathfinders move, they're snap shooting the, the that particular weapon. But uh, you do have the carbines to go along with it. <clears throat> but this can be really maxed out to a squad size uh, with all the upgrades, not counting dedicated transports of over 1,400 points, which is a lot of points to sink into a formation like this. But still, it has some uh, some interesting concepts. Now, what's nice is this is a formation that is very, very well tied to the fluff. Uh, in fact, before they came out with this, back on 6th edition, when Unbound first came out, I was essentially running uh, this squadron without uh, this formation without the Piranha because Pathfinders would range forward with Crute and with uh, Stealth Suits and actually would also include a pair or more of Remora drones as kind of cover, air cover. So it really is a very fluffy formation. And now with the new Death from the Skies rules, you can take this formation and those two drones um, as a separate flyer wing. So still, I, that's one of the reasons I really do like uh, this. I'm very much into playing according to the fluff. But putting that aside, there are some real reasons to try this formation out. Now, the video is going to talk about strengths and weaknesses. This is not just for Tau players. It's also for anyone who's potentially going to face this. Because uh, what you'll learn here will help you prepare for it. Okay, so let's kind of get started. Let's talk through some of the different things. The first thing about this is that it's a very generic formation. as It, it is a non-specialist formation. Meaning it's, it's not good at any one thing. <clears throat> but... It does have some different build options depending on how you, you build it out. Now, if you want to limit the piranha sized unit to uh, just one flyer, or sorry, one skimmer, or leave one of the Pathfinder units as just a f unit of four guys, you have um, some really fragile units that you can use to trigger one of its special rules, which we'll get to in a moment. The other thing you could do uh, by equipping Fusion blasters on each, for every three uh, stealth suits, you can have one fusion blaster. So you can equip those. Or for 10 points per piranha, put a fusion blaster on that. Uh, then, of course, the uh, Pathfinders can take three up to three rail rifles, or they can actually take uh, ion rifles as well. So those are strength six and strength seven, respectively. So really, you can turn this into a tank hunting formation <clears throat> with most of the units in it having the outflank special rule. So meaning mean you're going to go against side armor. But with the Piranha, with its Melta on there, being a fast skimmer, you can actually move 30 inches up the table first turn, be right in the, at the edge of the opponent's deployment zone, if not in it, threatening them with a bunch of uh, Melta shots. So that will force them to kind of direct their fire at that unit hopefully exposing some other opportunities when the other outflankers come in. If they don't deal with those piranhas, you got melta shots coming in. So it can be equipped as a tank hunting unit. <clears throat> of course, if just building the Pathfinder straight out without any special upgrades, you've got a slew of marker lights between a minimum of four, maximum of ten marker lights in a squad. Um, <clears throat> the best thing, though, is its Rignon specialist kind of approach. Now, the Rignon is... Uh, uh, one of the three doctrines that the Tau use, uh, whereas Monka and uh, Koyan both are in the fluff, I mean in the actual codex, Rinyon used to be referenced 
uh, it's more of uh, an art of encirclement, and we'll talk about that in a separate video. But you can equip uh, the Pathfinders with recon drones that give you a positional relay, or you can equip the positional relays on either or both of the stealth suit teams. The benefit of that is it allows you to control which side or edge of the table your, opponent, your own reinforcements that are outflanking can come in on. So again, if you, depending on how you equip it, you can give it some different specialties. <clears throat> so again, nice and, nice and flexible. That's one of the advantages of this formation. But one of the things that uh, we want to talk about, though, is kind of the, let's look at the strengths and weaknesses. As a strength, you're going to have multiple marker lights available here. If you do the upgrade on the stealth suits, each team will, could have one marker light. Each of these has a marker light per model. So you've got five units with marker lights. Three of those units can have up to 10 marker lights. You could honestly have 32 marker lights in this formation. That's a lot of markers on five different units. Pretty good, pretty strong. Uh, one of the benefits, strengths as well, is the outflank and deep strike maneuverability. With the exception of the Piranha, all the units can outflank. And both of those cell suit units can deep strike. That gives you a lot of flexibility in maneuvering uh, when you come in on the table. That's very important. The special rule for this formation is that if any one unit in this formation is destroyed, so take out you know four wounds on a five plus armor uh, Pathfinder squad, or two hull points on a side armor 10, rear armor 10, front armor 11 Piranha, you lose the unit automatically your very next turn, all of your reinforcements automatically come in. No need to roll. That's pretty powerful because on turn one, if you go second and your opponent has first turn and they actually destroy one of these units, on your turn one, your entire force arrives from reserve. No need to roll. That's pretty intense. It's almost like an alpha strike in itself. And now the other thing you do is have a very threatening uh, speed. The piranha itself, being a fast skimmer, can travel 30 inches a turn. And a devilfish on turn one can, if you count the scouting move that the pathfinders give it when they're mounted, you will also get a 30 inch move. So that really gets the opponent a threatening presence in their line because now you've got a pathfinder team, marker lights, multiple five, strength five shots, what have you, in their deployment zone. Piranhas, whether it's burst cannon or especially with the fusion blaster, again, in their deployment zone with strong weapons. That's the biggest, big strength. Unfortunately, this formation comes with quite a few weaknesses, which is, I think, one of the reasons it's a more balanced formation. First of all, it's strength, sorry, it's toughness three on all the models. That's a very easy to kill uh, formation. The Piranha itself only has a front armor 11 and side and rear are 10 but it only has two hull points. And as being open top, it's even more susceptible to being exploded on a penetrating hit, which, honestly, a heavy bolter can do. So, it could be, you know, it, it's squishy, let's be honest. Now, the other thing is limiting is that it has very few options for high strength or low AP weapons. Now, granted, the Piranhas can have five, if you take all five Piranhas, that's five Fusion Blasters, and the two stealth suit teams, if you max them out, is four more. But that's a lot of points to sink in to get all that strength A to AP1. Alternatively, you can get rail rifles for 15 points per on each of the squads. Each squad can have the, uh, sorry, each of the Pathfinder squads. Each one can have up to three. Or ion rifles, which is strength 7 AP4. Uh, so, you know, that's 10 per. So between 30 and 45 points on a squad in order to give them high strength weaponry. But that's the, that is the limit that you have available to you. So you don't have a lot of, you know, there's no strength 9, no strength 8 with any real range, not a lot of eight, uh, our, uh, space marine killers, because yes, if you happen to get the rail rifles, that's AP1, but you don't have a high volume of those. Nothing in here can be AP3. So again, not a strong showing in the weapon space. So it does have some real limitations. But let's consider the purpose, in just from a fluff perspective, to understand how this unit can be used. 
Remember, the Pathfinders and the whole recon team are all about scouting forward, locating and pinning down the enemy so that reinforcements can come in and take care of them. Essentially, deliver the monk a blow. Okay? So, at that point, this, this unit or formation ends up being more of a support formation, adding additional shots in, pr providing marker light support. So, let's see, that's really kind of how we should be using it. Now, let's take a look at a couple examples of how we can do use this and some of its special rules. Okay, so here we have a table laid out in the Dawn of War deployment type where you have the two ends, uh, long ends, being the deployment table's edge, deployment zones. So you deploy 12 inches in, the max you can, and this will actually work very, very well with even less effort on the diagonals, the uh, vanguard strike because you're actually starting much further forward. Now this devilfish contains in it a full, well, a squad of at least four pathfinders, but the key weapons upgrade is it includes on, in embarked a recon drone. The recon drone has the position relay and homing beacon. Very important. So the first thing you're going to do, because of the scout rule that the pathfinders have, it is conferred on the dedicated transport. You'll redeploy this 12 inches forward so that it is right at the center table at the beginning of the game. Your first turn you'll move it forward 12 inches okay, maximum and then during a shooting phase go further 6 inches okay, bringing it to here. Okay, That will now put it within 6 inches of the table edge both, of course it's you have to position it to the six inches of the side of the table, but it's, it's now within six inches of the rear table edge. In other words, your enemy's deployment uh, table edge. That's important because that recon drone, with its positional relay, allows outflanking units coming in on turn two or later to enter on any side that this recon drone is within six inches of. So in this case, it's within. The hull is where you measure from. You're within six inches of the rear table edge or the side. So now you can bring in any of your outflankers from the rear table, behind the enemy lines, or from the side. That's one way. Now, obviously, some guys are going to deploy stuff in the corner. You're going to be very difficult to do this. So your alternative is instead to bring outflankers. Don't deep strike your beautiful... Uh, stealth suits. Instead, bring them out off flanker. Yes, you may have to roll randomly first to bring them in and also which table edge, but you'll have complete control of where they come in, how close to the back edge. Whether it comes in the left or right, you can bring it on the board within six inches of the rear table edge and side, leave it there, and then every other in outflanking unit can come in on the table edge of its choice of those two bring in a second one on the other side. You can bring in all your models on any table edge if you position just two of these units, one on each opposite corner. So that's one of the powers of this potential form. It is a formation, it's a potential formation, because if one of those smaller Pathfinder groups is killed, now the second turn, everything comes in, all your outflankers come in. Now you're actually coming in from behind the opponent as well as along the side. So that's one of the ways you can you can definitely use it. All right, so do not forget that. Okay, so essentially that's the Tau Pathfinder formation. Uh, it's called Infiltration Cadre. Very useful. Uh, gives you a couple good rules that you take advantage of, and with the addition of the positional relay, uh, you're in pretty phenomenal shape. Uh, one thing I'll also add, though, is that if you bring a uh, the recon drone along, it also has the homing beacon. So if you do choose to deep strike any of your units, whether it's from this formation or another one, it will automatically deep strike without scatter within six inches of that particular hull, either the drone or the vehicle it's embarked in. Okay, So hope you got some advantages or uh, understand how to, how to take advantage of this formation. Hopefully you'll include it in your towel list. If you come across it, now you understand some of the you know, strengths and weaknesses and so you know how to kind of hopefully deal with it. All right, catch you in the next uh, tactical video. Enjoy. Please share, like, and subscribe. 
and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.